Okay, who's uh, next? Yeah, please. Excuse me, sit down. You weren't called. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Go back to Univision. Then all of a sudden, this guy gets up, starts screaming at the top of his lungs. And it was unfair to the other reporters. He was totally out of line. He was screaming and ranting and raving. When this clown, Jose Reyes or whatever the hell his name, oh, he's a baseball player, Ramos. He actually seemed like a nice guy after he calmed down a little bit. Donald Trump just won't stop talking about Jorge Ramos, anchor at our sister network Fusion, after that testy exchange over immigration. Mm -hmm. And Jorge joins us now. Good morning, Jorge. Donald Trump is not backing down. He says he got a lot of credit for the way he handled that. Trump seems to think he benefited from that confrontation. Do you think he benefited among his supporters? Well, I don't know exactly, but I think it is very important that as journalists we challenge those who are in power. And I think it is very dangerous that he wants to do the largest mass deportation in modern history that, by the way, would cost uh, more than $137 billion. And I think it is very dangerous that he's promoting in his speeches bigotry and hatred against immigrants. And Latinos, let me just give you a quick example. After I was expelled from that press conference, and in 30 years, this is the first time I've been ejected for asking a question, um, I saw a man, a Trump sympathizer, who told me, get out of my country. Interesting, because I'm also a U.S. citizen. Uh, But this happened just seconds after he told me, go back to Univision. So those uh, messages of hatred and bigotry, that's precisely what Mr. Trump is promoting, and that's what he's allowing to come up. Jorge, did you want a confrontation? We've all seen that video. You stood up, you kept talking, you kept trying to get your question in. Is, is that what you wanted, a confrontation? No, what, what I wanted was answers. As you know, I, I'm just a reporter, asking, a reporter asking questions, and I sent him a note uh, requesting an interview, and instead of responding to that note, he published my cell phone on the Internet, and, of course, I had to change my cell phone. So I... He wasn't going to call me. What happened is I allowed two reporters. Two reporters asked questions before me. Then I said, um, I have a question on immigration. Nobody said anything. He, he stayed silent. And when I started stating the premise of my question, which is that he can't deport 11 million or build, uh, build a 1,900-mile wall or deny citizenship to the children born here, he clearly didn't like my question. So he, uh, he did something very strange with his mouth. He signaled his bodyguard to um, take me out of the press conference, and that's exactly what he did. But I I, I want questions. I I want answers, and he just didn't give me answers. Okay. You you have been very open about being an advocate for certain things. You said to George this week, we have to denounce that he wants to deny Mm -hmm. citizenship to children being born here. You're saying Mm -hmm. much the same this morning. Does that put you in a difficult position covering the campaigns? I don't think so. I think that as a reporter, many times you have to take a stand when it comes to racism, discrimination, corruption, public lies, dictatorships, and human rights. We have, we have to take a stand. And the best examples of journalism that I have, um, Edward Morrow against McCarthy, Cronkite during the Vietnam War, or the Washington Post reporters uh, forcing the resignation of Richard Nixon, that's when reporters challenge those who are in power. And I think it is our responsibility to do that. It is, I find it ironic and fascinating that I'm being criticized by other reporters for asking questions. Isn't that the essence, exactly, of what we do? Well, well Jorge, I, you are an enormously popular anchorman, we, the most well-known Spanish-language anchor in America. So tell me what effect this will have and what you are saying and what you are advocating for. What effect will this have in your community and those who watch well, you? What I just want to say is that if he, Donald Trump, wants to change this country the way he is proposing, uh, he has to be challenged. And this is what's going to happen. Uh, Latinos won't forget this. 16 million Latinos will go to the polls next year. And just to put it in perspective, that number, President Barack Obama won by, by less than 5 million votes. So in other words, Latinos could define this election. In, in a year from now, I, I'm truly convinced that both parties, including Republicans, and Donald Trump is a creation of the Republican Party, 
both parties would be pleading for Hispanic votes because no one at this time, no one really can make it to the White House without okay, Jorge, I'm going to I'm going to thank you and stop you there. But thank you very much for joining us this thank morning. You.